Dr. Martin Luther King's last living sibling, the family matriarch, has died. Christine King Ferris was a familiar face at the annual MLK commemorative event. She always stood out with her regal hats. As our DJ Duke shows us, King Ferris's life was so much more. She served as the chair many years. Christine King Ferris, esteemed educator, civil rights activist, and author. Born on September 11, 1927 in Atlanta, the first child of Reverend Martin Luther King Sr. and Alberta Christine Williams King. Her formative years were shaped in large part on Auburn Avenue, in the house where her younger brother, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was born, and her spiritual home, the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, where her grandfather, father and brother served as pastors. That is where mom grew up. That is where mom joined the church. That is where she was baptized and where her brother Martin remarked that he followed right behind her joining the church. At the age of 16, Ferris followed in the footsteps of her mother, grandmother and great aunt, enrolling in Spelman College, where she earned a bachelor's degree in economics in 1940. Unable to attend UGA, which didn't accept black students at the time, Ferris attended New York's Columbia University, where she obtained two master's degrees in education. Ferris returned to Georgia, eventually securing her first teaching position at Atlanta's W.H. Krogman Elementary School. Ferris returned to her beloved Spelman nearly a decade later, accepting a faculty position. The college's longest serving faculty member, Ferris served as associate professor of education and director of the Learning Resources Center until her retirement in 2014. She poured into so many uh, lives of young women. Um, just remarkable, remarkable history at Spelman. My brothers and I had each other, and we three stuck together like pages in a brand new book. In 2003, Ferris published a children's book about Dr. King's childhood and the sibling's upbringing. Just as she watched over younger brothers Martin and A.D. when they were children, decades later, Ferris helped ensure Dr. King's legacy lived on following his assassination in 1968. A great civil rights activist in her own right, Ferris joined Dr. King's widow, Coretta Scott King, in establishing the King Center for Nonviolent Social Change in Northwest Atlanta. They teamed up again to get Congress to approve a national holiday in honor of Dr. King's birth and presided over the annual MLK Ecumenical Service at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Ferris was part of the Georgia delegation that traveled to Washington, D.C. in 2011 for the MLK dedication ceremony when Dr. King's monument was erected on the National Mall. Then, six years later, in 2017, Ferris joined Georgia political and civic leaders for the unveiling of a long-awaited statue of Dr. King at the state capitol. In 2022, the matriarch's family and friends marked her 95th birthday with a gospel music celebration at Ebenezer. We knew we had to celebrate her in a major way. Uh, because mom has poured in so much uh, in so many ways and with so many people, uh, it was only fitting that we planned um, a major celebration. A devoted wife, mother, and grandmother, Mrs. Ferris was married to Isaac Newton Ferris Sr. for 57 years before his passing. The couple had two children.